You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Sleep. It's early. What time is it? I don't know. My watch stopped. Oh, look at the clock. It says seven, but it's wrong. Oh, it can't be wrong. You wound it, didn't you? It has to be wrong. Look out the window. It's still dark. Must be three or four in the morning. <clears throat> Why don't you turn the light on? I don't need it. Leave it off. So. This is the day, huh? This is the day. Well, if you got three or four hours yet, what do you have to get up now for? Can't sleep. So I thought I might as well go over to the jail. You know what I think? What? I think you're crazy. If it really is the middle of the night, you're crazy to get up now. What's so special about today? Ella. Just... About hanging a little? I said, why don't you go back to sleep? Why don't you? There's going to be all kinds of excitement today. Reporters and everything else. You're the one that could use some sleep. Bring breakfast over about 8.30. You want some coffee now? Pierce will have some at the jail. Just bring Jagger's breakfast at 8.30. What about you? I can't eat. What time do you string him up? Ella. You know what I mean. What time does he get hung? Hanged. That's what I said. What time? When you're talking about an execution, Ella, the word's hanged. It's at 9.30. And you know something? I hope they stay away. I hope everybody stays away, not just the reporters, the whole town. Because when I think of a bunch of cold-blooded Gawkers who get their jollies from watching a boy die, I, I want to... Well, why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't the whole town turn out to watch it? Including you? I haven't decided yet. Well, why would you want to see a thing like that? Why would you even think about it? Because if anybody deserves it, he does. Dirty little animal. I'm leaving now. I understand that after the neck breaks, they only feel it for a couple of seconds. Well, it ought to take more time than that, Charlie. For what he done, this is a mighty easy way to pay it off, don't you think? Easy? To get strung up by the neck? All I can say is you have a funny view of what's easy and what's hard. Just remember to bring his breakfast over. Hey, Charlie. How does he want his eggs? Edible. They're the last ones he's gonna eat, so do one thing for me, will you, Ella? Make them edible. Sheriff Charlie Koch on the morning of an execution. For the record, and as a matter of absolute fact, it is a little after 7 a.m. Now, logic and natural laws dictate that at this hour there should indeed be daylight. It is a simple rule of physical science that the sun should rise at a certain moment and take away the darkness. But at this given moment, Sheriff Charlie Koch, his wife Ella, a condemned man named Jagger, and everyone else in this small, inconsequential town are about to find out that there are some causes and effects that have no precedent, except in the Twilight Zone. And now, back to our story from the Twilight Zone. I am the Night, Color Me Black. Starring John Ratzenberger with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Morning, Sheriff. Pierce, anything doing? Nothing much. You sure? Yep. Take your feet off the desk. Uh, sure thing, Sheriff. 
Glad you finally made it. <laughs> this ain't the day to be oversleeping. You tell me all about sleeping, Pierce. You're the expert on that. Hey, hey don't get me wrong. I mean, I ain't complaining. I'm you but... ain't complaining, but at two or three in the morning, you've had a four-hour shift. And, buddy, that doesn't break anybody's back. Two or three in the morning? <laughs> what have you been drinking? It's 7.30. And why is it pitch black outside? What are you talking about? Take a look. I... I don't get it. What don't you get, Deputy? That some men can't sleep and get up early? I suppose that doesn't make much sense to a guy who could put in 12 solid hours on a mattress and then wake up and complain Sh about... Sheriff! You got a problem, Pierce? Sh Sheriff, it is 7.30 in the morning. Uh, take a look at the clock. And you're right, it's black as a coal mine outside. I never seen a blacker. What's going on? You're right. It's 7.30. And the sun's not up yet. And to tell you the truth, Deputy, I don't know why. I, I don't know why at all. Who's coming? I can't see yet. Everything out there looks the same. Black as the ace of spades. Morning, Colby. Sheriff? How about that? You see it out there? Of course I saw it. Any sign of the sun? Not a speck. You gonna run an extra in that paper of yours? If I get the time. I've been answering the phone since six in the morning. One fella says that the electricity's gone off in the whole town. Well, I can see that's not true. Another one says it's already tomorrow night. <laughs> I like that. Well, what do you think? Well, hold on, there's more. The president of the January graduating class of our local school, who majors in physics, tells me it's a phenomenon caused by sunspots. Now, you're well-versed in law and order, Sheriff Koch, keeping the peace, in other words. So, I'm here to ask you, what's your theory? I wish I had one. It's almost a quarter to eight in the morning. Daylight should have come two hours ago. Ah, eh, maybe a storm's on the way. Big whopping storm, the kind that covers up the whole sky. Possible, I suppose. Storms don't bring this kind of darkness. Anybody call the state capitol? Oh, yeah. In between reassuring people that this is neither an interplanetary invasion, nor the end of the world, I place said call myself. And? Oh, things are normal there. It's daylight, just as it should be. But if you'll forgive the pun, they're as much in the dark as we are. Y you mean it ain't black up there? It appears that all up and down the state, and across the face of the earth for that matter, we are the only ones who are groping around in total darkness. So, the phenomenon is quite localized, which means we'll have to seek elsewhere for company to share our misery. How's Jagger doing this morning? I seen him. Brought him in a cup of coffee to make sure he was awake. Thoughtful of you. Ah, to remind him about what day it is. I'll bet you did. <laughs> I wonder... How did you occupy yourself as a lad there, Deputy? Torture small animals or just pull the wings off flies? Say, hey, what do you mean by that? Oh, uh, nothing. I don't mean anything by it. So, Koch, can I talk to him? Go right on in. I'm not saying he'll talk to you, but that's the privilege of the press to try. So he's got an hour and 45 minutes left. What about a priest or a minister? He doesn't want either. As a point of interest, Sheriff, entirely off the record, do you believe Jagger's guilty? Mr. Colby, I arrest people on the basis of evidence, I jail them on that evidence, and I'm responsible for their meals and their health until they get sentenced, executed, or let loose. As to guilt or innocence, it's a matter for the jury, public opinion, and God to decide. And that part of it, thank the Lord, has nothing to do with me. Uh-huh. So, let us all praise God for the morning's impartiality. You just keep them alive until their moment of death. I see, I see. And as for my part, I follow fate around with a small pencil and a notebook and make a record for posterity of how he died and why he died. But neither one of us has any guilt to share for the fact that he does die. How perfectly convenient for us. He's guilty as hell. He fired Buckshot into a man's head. A real decent, upstanding man. And today, he's going to pay the price. He's going to hang for it. And man, oh man, is justice going to be served up deluxe style this time. Pierce, why don't you shut your mouth? I got a right to an opinion. Oh, you do, Deputy. Indeed you do. There are just a couple of disturbing facets to this particular case. Like what? First, 
that the murder victim was not a decent man by any stretch of the imagination. Hey, you're talking about the dead. He was a cross burner and a psychopathic bully who attacked the man you've got locked up in there. Well, that don't matter. Go on, Comey. I want to hear this. Second, Deputy Pierce here saw it happen and then perjured himself. Now, wait a minute. Let him finish. That's the word, all right, Deputy. Perjured. You said that Jagger shot him from across the room. Well, no such thing could have happened, according to the records I saw. The murder man had powder burns all over him. So what? Oh, you tell me how a man can get shot from ten feet away and still have powder burns on his skin. By itself, that might not have proved self-defense, but it would have supported Jagger's story. It would have at least raised some doubts in the jury room. If they had heard it. I wondered about that myself. Did you, Sheriff Koch? Well, you saw the body, didn't you? I saw it. But I didn't hear any comment on those powder burns when you gave your testimony, or, or did I miss that? I answered the questions they asked me. Oh, don't feel singled out now, because your courageous editor who covered the trial from start to finish, he just didn't see fit to include that insignificant little detail in any of his news stories either, now did he? Even though for some reason he knew at the time that he was being very, very selective about what he wrote and what he didn't write, about the truth, in other words. Which is what a trial is supposed to be, a search for the truth. So, when you get right down to it, you're quite right, Deputy. Justice is being served on a platter with its tongue cut out, just like the carcass of any dead animal. Call me when you're ready. I will. Smoke, Jagger? No, sir. You don't mind if I have one. Go ahead. I quit years ago, but I picked up a pack last night. I don't know why. And this morning, I looked at it like I've never seen a pack of cigarettes before. It didn't even feel right in my hand. I know it's bad for me, but I put it in my pocket just the same. Now, why do you suppose that is? Can I ask you a question, Mr. Coley? Anything you like. I can't promise I'll have the answer, though. I was just wondering, uh... What kind of day is it? Oh, you're not gonna believe me, even if I tell you. It's rainy, huh? No, it's not bad. A little chilly. The main thing is... It's still dark. How do you mean? It's still black as night outside. The sun never came up. Close to eight in the morning, and... Not even a little bit of daylight. God, come on. Don't kid me. I'm not. <laughs> Why would I? What reason would I have to lie to you? Well, I, this place doesn't have any windows, so I, I guess it could be Christmas Eve or the 4th of July, and I wouldn't know the difference. Jagger, do you have a uh, religious affiliation? No. Anybody you want to see? Nobody. Anything you'd like to say? Anything at all? Nothing. No priest, no friends, no comment. What do you have? What do you think, Mr. Colby? Not much, that's what. I mean, I've got a little over an hour, and I've been thinking that I'd like to rip these bars apart and get out, same as you would. Or maybe, you know, just save everybody the trouble and hang myself in here. But I haven't got the strength for one or the guts for the other, so I'm just sitting here and waiting. What else is there? That being the case, would you care to make a statement? You want a statement? Is that what you came here for? Look at it this way. I don't think anybody should leave the Earth without a comment. You, me, or anyone else. Oh, well, now that sounds like a reasonable request. Considering that you're not the one who's leaving. I'm serious. I'm giving you the chance to say anything you want. All right, then. I'm guilty, Mr. Colby. How's that? That should let you off the hook. And that's supposed to mean what? That's supposed to mean that you're on the side of the good guys. You know... You have to be good guys and bad guys. That's the nature of man. Well, I'm the bad guy, okay? Worse than that, I'm the troublemaker in town. The one with the causes and the banners. I'm the idiot. The fool. I tried to be his brother's keeper. You understand now, Mr. Colby? It doesn't matter whether I do or not. I want to hear what you think, on or off the record. Anything I say, you're going to write it down and put it in that little newspaper of yours, aren't you? Not if you don't want me to. How would I know if you did or you didn't? I don't have a tape recorder on me. See? 
My notebook's in my pocket, and so is my pencil. If I did put it in my paper, what good would that do me? <laughs> As a matter of fact, it would do me some damage. Because I didn't speak out about the case. I kept silent, not even an editorial. So I can't very well change my stripes now, can I? I said all I had to say in court. But nobody listened. Well, I'm listening. We're two men talking here. If you say it's private, that's how it stays. What difference can it possibly make to you now? I have to know. Can you understand that? I have to. You think I know? You were there. You got one of those cigarettes? Right here. There was a shotgun. It wasn't mine, it was his. Everybody knows that, but... They convicted me on premeditated murder, even though I'm the one who tried to take it away from him before he could go out and use it. So you fought with him? I either loaded the gun and put it in his hands, or I tried to get it away from him. Take your pick. All I remember is the gun going off, and that's what counts, isn't it? Not motives, not what's in your head. You know what road is paved with good intentions. Good, bad, it doesn't matter. I'd say there's a big difference, a huge one. Except that the man I killed, he was the White Knight. I wouldn't say that. Well, I would. The things he did, other people only thought about. What they wanted to see happen, but didn't dare do. He was the cross burner, the bomb thrower. He did their dirty work for them, like whipping some poor, scared guy just for being black. When nobody else had the guts to pick up a stick or a rock to do it themselves. So the White Knight ended up with his brains spattered all over the place. And I was the cause of that, one way or the other. There was no way the people around here were gonna pin a medal on me. You don't think much of this town, do you? Do you? The man wasn't a saint, but he died. And what the jury said was that regardless of how it happened, we cannot dispense life or death because someone offends us. That's the distinction between men and animals. And that's, that's well said, Mr. Colby. You tell it to the man who fixes up the rope, okay? You tell it to the sheriff and his deputy out there. You, you tell that to the town while they stand around and watch my eyes bulge out, my tongue swell up, and I choke and do my little dance for them. You tell them all about the difference between men and animals. But you better draw pictures. Because this kind of language they just don't get. Cut! You ready, Mr. Colby? I'm ready. A lot of commotion out there. I guess they just can't wait. Well, that's not it. It's because nobody can see where they're going. Why's that? I told you, it's dark out. For real? The darkest I've ever seen it. Get the crossbar on there real good. I got it, officer. And the rope. Make sure it's fixed right. Don't want it to break now, would we? Uh, no, sir. Uh, could you point your flashlight up here one more time? You got it. How's that? <laughs> Looks A-OK -okay from here. You done real good, boys. Boss? What? Uh, well, sir, you had us add cleats to the support, and then you wanted a bigger crossbar, and now you ordered a new rope but just for today. Well, the old setup was just fine the way it was, as far as I could tell. So how come you went and spent all that extra money? Because this one's going to go off without a hitch. Right, boys? Well, if it don't, it sure won't be your fault. Yeah, that's the truth. All right. I guess you can come on down. We got to test it one time. Sure thing, boss. Now, when I say pull, you drop the sandbag. Yo. All right, then. Pull. That got her. That got her good, didn't it, boy? Yeah, boss. It sure did. Who's that? Easy, Pierce. Looks like everything's in working order. 
Yep. That'll take care of him. Sure it will. But I'm still worried about one thing. And what's that? Exactly who or what is gonna take care of us. There it goes, nine bells. Why is it so dark then? Is it an eclipse? Can't be. I've been listening on the radio. This ain't no eclipse. It's weird. It's just plain weird. Word of the darkness that has suddenly and inexplicably engulfed this remote Midwestern town. Turn up that radio so we can hear. It is now 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but latest reports indicate that the darkness blanketing the specific location is virtually total. So far, there is no sign whatever of any daylight on the horizon. A spokesman for the Meteorological Service says that the event is without precedent, according to records covering the past 150 years. Who's that? Turn on your headlights. Why, it's Sheriff Koch's wife. Morning, Ella. Is that you, June? It's me. What you got on the tray? Breakfast. Oh, aren't you the one fixing a nice hot meal for your man? Well, it's not for Charlie. Who's it for, then? For him. You don't mean... Mm, afraid so. For Jagger. What did you go and waste good food for? He don't have no right. He don't even have time to eat it. It's the law. The law? That's what my husband says. Anyway, I can help carry out the letter of the law. I'm glad to. It's my duty. Ella? Over here, Charlie. Just bring it on inside. I'll be right there. Excuse me. The governor, please. Yes, I'll wait. But please, tell him it's urgent. Mr. Colby? Hi, Ella. Where should I put this? What? No, this is the uh, editor of the Sun-Times. That's right. I'm calling to see if there's been a stay in the... Yes, I'll hold. What do you have there? Charlie said to bring it. Breakfast? For the condemned man. I guess you could just take it on in. To the cell? The hall door is open. It's right down there. I know where it is. Charlie said to fix a plate of eggs. He didn't say I had to spoon feed it. Yes, well, of course, if he's on the phone. He's not? What do you mean nobody called? No, no, listen. After the automatic appeals, there's always a request to the governor's office for a stay while they argue it before the circuit court. Morning, Mrs. Koch. I thought that was you. Yes, uh, I'll hold. Thanks for bringing the tray. <laughs> Just in time, too. I wouldn't want it to go to waste. When did you make these eggs? When? They're cold. Well, that's not my fault. You could at least have brought them on time. Charlie, you listen here. I couldn't drive because there's no street light, so I walked over. I couldn't even see where I was going. That's just how long it took me. All right, all right. I'll take it into him. If he doesn't like it, he can throw it in the trash for all I care. Well, now, don't do that. I mean, I haven't had nothing to eat this morning. I said I'll take it to him. Yes, I'm here. I see. You sure... That's it, then. All right. Yes. Who was that? The governor's secretary. And? No dice. I see. Well, there you go. Sure is a big, fat surprise. No, but I'll tell you what is. It's a surprise that someone can go to trial for his life for the third-rate public defender who's afraid to stand up to the local DA. It's a surprise that no private lawyer somewhere heard about the case and went to bat pro bono. It's a surprise that the public defender didn't even try to call the governor a half hour before the sentence is carried out. And it's a surprise that I didn't give up the ghost on this place a long time ago. But it's not a surprise that you, Pierce, and this whole town are out of your minds with glee over the cold-blooded taking of a life that's about to occur. Thank you drop this. It's all right, Reverend Anderson. It's uh, empty. Whiskey helps, does it, Mr. Colby? It doesn't hurt. Helps you see things more clearly? 
Or does it keep you from seeing? You suppose, Reverend, that there's some theological explanation for this morning? Theology? <laughs> That's for divinity schools. This is a time for faith. Faith in death or in darkness? Maybe if we thought there was a divine act going on here, we could find a way to live with it. God is always with us, whether we know it or not. Is he? Even now. This isn't the first gallows ever built, Reverend, or the last. Won't be the first man to lose his life at an untimely age, and we won't be the last mourners on this earth either. Did you see him? Did you talk to him? Briefly. He wouldn't see me. Wouldn't even let me in his cell. That's a pity. He's a lonely boy. But at least he won't be lonely for much longer. That's the truth. He's going to glory. I'm glad you think so. And you don't, Mr. Colby? It would be easier if I did. But I gave up my faith years ago. Now I'm not sure I ever had it. We all stumble in life. Lose our way for a time. But the shepherd doesn't give up. He keeps on looking for us. What happens if the shepherd loses his way too? It must be time. Listen to them. Oh, they want blood. Reminds me of sports fans in a, an arena somewhere. Yes, a Roman one. How's it look out there? Hard to tell. When they light their torches and storm the jail, I'll let you know. Well, I'd better get the prisoner ready. You're going through with it? Unless something happens in the next ten minutes, I have no choice. Then I suggest we use this time wisely. And how do we do that, Reverend? There's only one thing left to do. We pray. No time to pray now. It's 925. That's right, ain't it? 925? Five more minutes. I can't believe Kotcha's doing this. The sun's not up yet. Law says May 25th at 9.30 in the morning. Well, that's what it is. May 25th, and it's pretty near 9.30 already. Quite apart from the fact, Mr. Pierce, that you're not the most sensitive of men, doesn't this morning suggest to you that there's something odd going on, that perhaps we'd better dispense with business as usual until we find out exactly what it is? You know something? I've taken an awful lot of crap from you. And just who are you, anyway? A little shot editor of a crummy little paper? That's right, a crummy little paper that crawls along on its hands and knees from one edition to another. The way I figure it, you got more creditors than you got readers. That'll do it, Pierce. That won't do it by a long shot. And maybe you feel like turning your cheek to this bum, but there ain't no rule book says I got it. He says I perjured myself, says I lied. And he wasn't throwing no bouquets at you, either. Maybe because I don't deserve any. You know, Colby, you're right. I saw the victim. He did have powder burns. And when a committee of townspeople came to me and said there'd be no autopsy, I just bent my head and shuffled my feet and nodded. We've all got little axes to grind, don't we? I'd like to be re-elected sheriff. And you, Colby, you'd like to keep that newspaper going. And Deputy Pierce over here, he likes to feel important. He likes to be popular. He likes to stay on the side of the majority. So here we are, gentlemen. All of us treading water in a sewer. I don't take it from him, and I don't take it from you neither. Watch who you put your hands on, Pierce. Oh, what? You better unravel it right now, or I'll spread you all over the yard. It's 927, Gotch. Then we better go get the prisoner. At last, Mr. Pierce. A labor of love, huh? You coming, Pierce? Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> I wouldn't miss it for the world. I want to see Jagger's face when he gets a look at that gallows. You won't be able to see anything, and neither will anybody else, as long as it stays dark out. And maybe that's just as well. Come on! Let's get this show on the road! Hurry it up, Sheriff! Can't wait all morning! There he is! Dirty little murderer! I want to see him choke! You don't need the chains. I'm not going anywhere. He has some minutes, doesn't he? He's used them already. We're behind schedule. You can talk to him now, Reverend. Take your time. It's my time. I got nothing to talk about. Then let's go. Let's get on with it. 
Don't waste your last minutes, Jagger. We're a different color, and I know we have different faiths, but you've stood up for me and mine. You've spoken for us, and God help you, you've killed for us. I think we owe you some peace, and I'd like to try to give you some. That rope over there give me peace. I don't need any words, Reverend. No quotations, nothing in the Bible or any other book. Get it over with! Yeah. Yeah, let's go! Yeah! Patience, everybody! I'm gonna give you what y'all came here for. I'll dance at the end of the rope and I'll choke and I'll swing back and forth like a rag doll. Yeah, you'll see, you'll get your money's worth. I promise! This way. I told you, I'll do this myself. Any last words? Not on your life. That's one thing I won't give you people. I won't give you the satisfaction of saying, I'm sorry! Yeah! 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 Don't return their hate. Don't dishonor yourself. Why don't you go home? Go on. Get out of here. Just tell me one thing. When he came at you, Jagger, did it feel good then? What's the difference? And when you aimed that gun at his head, that wasn't such a bad moment, was it? Good or bad, who cares? If I wanted him dead or not, it ended the same. What was in my heart didn't matter, because it's what you do that counts, isn't it? Not what you wish for. So, when you killed him, Jagger, when you blew his head off, there were no regrets then, were there? If I told you I didn't mean it, would you let me go? The law's the law. It's, it's what I did in this life. The same is for him, and I hated his kind. You enjoyed seeing him dead, didn't you? You know it. Now I know it, too. I know it only too well. This man is guilty. We're all guilty. Guilty as sin. It's important to get with the majority, isn't it? That's the big thing. That's what really matters to you. We're all the majority. The minority died on the cross 2,000 years ago. You want a statement? I'll give you a statement. Tell everybody that. Tell them they're no better than me. Who wants to put the rope around my neck, huh? You lady! You want to put it on, mister? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And who, who wants to pull the lever, huh? You, Reverend! But you know we're all murderers! I'll do it. Hey! You seen the light, Reverend? You finally seen the light? Have you? Have any of you? In all this darkness, can anyone make out the truth? Look at what's hanging from that gallows. He hated. He killed. Now he dies. You hated. You killed. And not one of you isn't doomed. Not one. Do you know why it's dark? Do you know why there's night all around us? Do you know now what the blackness really is? It's the hate he felt. The hate you've felt. The hate all of us felt. There was too much. There was way too much, and we had to vomit it up, and now it's surrounding us and choking us. So much hate. So much miserable hate. Oh, it's getting colder. Look what's happening. It's getting even darker. You can't, you can't hardly see anything now. Take me home, Charlie. I want to go home. I will, if I can find the way. That's crazy, isn't it? 
what he said. I isn't it crazy? You know what's gonna happen, don't you? I mean, you know what's gonna happen next. Oh, believe me, this here stuff is gonna lift. It you know, it'll, it'll just all of a sudden just plain lift. Because it's just, it's, it's just a fog is all it is. Nothing more than a fog. And a lift. And there'll be the old sun, high up and bright. Wait and see. There'll be the old sun, shining to beat the band. I don't know. I don't know if there'll ever be daylight again. Only God knows. And I'm not even sure about that. Reports now coming in of similar occurrences here in the United States and abroad. At 9 o'clock this morning, a dark cloud suddenly appeared over several widely separated U.S. cities. The government of Israel has verified the fact that a rectangular area over the West Bank appears to have gone dark. In China, correspondents just filed a news item about several square blocks, including a political prison, thrown into darkness early this morning. In Iran, an area in Southeast Asia, in Central and South America, the African continent, the darkness continues to spread. Witness the effects of a sickness known as hate. Not a virus, not a microbe, not a germ, but a very real sickness just the same. Universal and not easily contained. The diagnosis? Highly contagious and unfortunately quite deadly in its effects. Consider yourself forewarned. Don't look for this one in the realm of science fiction, but rather right in front of you, in the mirror. As a matter of survival, you'd be well advised to eradicate it now, right now, before the light goes out, somewhere in the vicinity of your town. A prescription prepared for all within listening range of the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. I Am the Night, Color Me Black, starring John Ratzenberger with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Taylor Miller, Rick Peoples, Doug James, Norm Waddell, John Watson Sr., Turk Muller, Jeff Lupiton, Paul Patch, Maggie Carney, Lynn Foley, Carl Amari, and Irene Olson. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. Thank <laughs> you.